thank you for coming to uh, session five in the Align uh, class. Uh, as you will see from the title, we're talking about retirement planning, uh, being financially wise in that. Uh, in previous times, as just a quick review, we've talked about in lesson one, God owns it all and we're the managers. One day we're gonna stand before God and he's gonna ask us the question, not only uh, what did you do with my son, Jesus Christ, but will also ask us, what did you do with the stuff that I gave to you? Now we talked about some of the pushback in our society, about why do we have to work? Uh, how do we get money to spend? Uh, God, God's order for using that money, giving, saving, and then we talked about debt and debt resolution, and we're up to lesson five today on retirement planning. Now, as I have mentioned before, every spending decision is a financial one if, in fact, God is the owner of all. And this is spiritual material that we are sharing, and we will only hear as the Spirit becomes our teacher. I would like to take a moment and pray and ask God to uh, bring that to us, which we can use in our own lives in being a better manager or steward for Him. Join me in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, uh, you are so gracious in uh, giving us a handbook for living as a follower of yourself and the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, you've been very specific in this area of uh, material possessions, uh, management of what you own as you own it all, and uh, what you expect from us. I thank you for the time we have in this session to take a look at uh, how we think about uh, uh, what we call in our country retirement, and how we can plan for that and be faithful stewards so that in fact we can bless others even as we come to that point in our life. So uh, let the Spirit be your teacher and go uh, chair to chair here in this room. And uh, as this is listened in future days, and may uh, we hear uh, what you want to tell us about this course, I pray in Christ's name, amen. So today, uh, pursuing financial freedom, uh, retirement planning, I'm going to start out with a little bit of shock therapy uh, with some statistics of the condition, the deplorable condition of retirement planning in our country today. It, it, it is incredible, as you see some statistics in just a moment, of where we are as a country, one of the richest countries in the world with a lot of wealth passing through our hands, knowing that one day we're gonna have to uh, take care of ourselves and maybe end working in where we are today. Let's look at some of those uh, pieces along the way. Uh, there are fill outs in either your sheet or your book and uh, usually they are underlined, hopefully all the time, on the screen so you can follow along. First one, 97% of retirees could not write a check for $600. Think of what that means. If you made even $40,000 or maybe $50,000 on average for 40 years of work, and there's a couple million dollars that went through your checking account or however you handled your money. And coming to the end of the life, end of life where you only have, you cannot write a check for $600 speaks of a huge problem of mismanagement of uh, God's blessing to us as a whole country. 54% are still working after 65. I'm going to give you the results of a Forbes uh, study from 2013 that unpacks this a little bit more. But more than half of people work after 65. Now some are doing that voluntarily. If there's opportunity, if there's health, then uh, that can be a good thing. I had a man in class on Sunday, when we hit this point, he raised his hand and he said, I worked till I was 80 years old and I loved every day of it. <laughs> I said, you're an unusual man. If we get to work in a job where we are so fulfilled, we want to work uh, up until we're 80. That is an exception, an exception. We talked to her in an earlier class. 92% of people don't like where they're working or what they're asked to do. Huge uh, level of dissatisfaction. 54% have to work. Uh, be, uh, need to work because they have to just to support themselves in retirement. The 97%, here's the other side, only 3% of people in our country uh, upon retirement, and as I said in my prayer, retirement is a, it's a cultural thing here. 1935, Franklin Delano Roosevelt started Social Security and the concept of retirement, not working until you could not work anymore. It's a rather recent development of thinking about retirement and it, the way we set up our culture, we need to plan so that we don't have full-time income. Only 3% have understood that formula and are prepared by setting away during their working years and are what is called financially secure or another term that's used, able to retire with dignity. In other words, I don't have to push pallets at night in some warehouse or a store in order to pay my rent 
or pay the heat bill. Tragic. Bankruptcies increased 244% for seniors in the last decade. We'll see that when we unpack the uh, Forbes study and the next uh, data point here. But can you imagine that coming to the end of uh, life, the later years, and saying, I just give up? Now, there may be some health reasons or long-term illness that uh, bring a person to that point, but 244% uh, increase because seniors didn't manage along the way. Now, the average boomer, uh, you know what the boomer is? The boomer generation born between 1946 and 1964. 10,000 boomers are retiring every day. This has been going on for a few years now. And uh, jumping into the Social Security system, by the way, we'll talk about in a minute. But the average boomer has $30,000 in savings. That's all they've saved up for retirement. When we were talking about the debt lessons, we talked about the, uh, uh, the uh, inability to, to contain one's spending to what you earn. We talked further of that with a verse out of Ephesians 4 I'll mention in the way, but can you imagine going your whole lifetime and only having $30,000 spent, uh, able to uh, uh, be in savings in case you needed that money? Uh, $30,000, we'll see uh, when we look at the three-legged stool here in a few minutes, uh, how that figures out, and if you want to do the math on it, multiply times 4%, that's what their savings will provide for them in retirement. That's why there's a crisis out there. Now here's kind of a summary to some of those statistics. The lack of planning puts many seniors into the crisis mode leading up to and facing retirement. Here's the uh, breakout on it uh, done by in the Forbes article. And he says there are waves that are happening in our society right now. Wave one, retirees are coming back to work. Uh, the man who wrote this article apparently was a consultant. He said one of my one of my clients is a sheriff's office where I live. And he said, we've seen a number of sheriffs after their retirement party, they get out, they find what it really costs to live, and they say, can we come back to work part-time? He said, here's the main reason it's happening. Now, this is 2013, before Obamacare. The main reason was the cost of insurance. You know, that it is going up for years. It's been much higher than the uh, inflation rate. And that was not figured into their retirement planning. So retire, retirees want to come back to work. It's not always available. Certainly not usually full-time or at the salary scale uh, where they were working and often minimum uh, wage. And it is not a solution to it. Number two, workers delay full retirement. That can be a good thing. Let me just throw in this in retirement planning. Uh, and it's happened since I retired, I don't find that word in the Bible, <laughs> which I stopped working for compensation. That's a little harder to say, but more descriptive. Uh, since, I, since my wife and I got into that situation, there's been a great gift handed out by Social Security. For every year that you work after the full retirement age, which is 66 and a half or seven right now, you, if you work another year and make a Social Security deposit, then uh, you will be given 4% more on an annual basis in your retirement check. So I have friends and it's what we did. We worked till 70, I didn't get the whole benefit on that, uh, but there's a great gift in social security. So in retirement planning, especially if you're up in the years and you're facing, should I retire or not? Just keep working a year or two, four, eight, 12, 16% if you work to, till age 70, more in your retirement check every year uh, for trying to entice people to, uh, keep uh, contributing to Social Security. Number three, uh, full retirement is unachievable. A majority of people in our country right now are saying, I will never be able to stop working. That is not a choice. That's why uh, the phrase is used, retire with dignity, so that you can come to the place where you have a choice not to work. And it, uh, it's all rooted way back into the ages that are represented here down into the 20s when decisions are made along the way. In wave four, according to this author, is drowning, full crisis. That's when you go into bankruptcy. That's when you move in with the kids. That's when you uh, go on public assistance of some sort because you've just run out. You've gone through your resources and there's no longer possibility maybe because of health or opportunity to uh, increase your income. Now, the classic model of talking about retirement planning is uh, often built on this idea of a three-legged stool. A one-legged stool is just 
idiotic, right? <laughs> if you ever tried to sit on a, a rock on a stick, which I've done before down in Haiti. But it, that, that's not very practical. Two-legged is worse. But the three-legged stool, uh, if you have one of those stools at home or ever milk cows with one, uh, is a very stable kind of a fixture. And when we talk about it in retirement planning, it's often called the three-legged stool retirement planning. Number one, social security. As I said, 1935, Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, wanted to say to people, you don't have to work all your life. The government is going to, if you will pay in, the government is going to take care uh, of you, at least in part, when you retire. However, for those of you who are younger here, 30, 35 and younger, the statistic is this. More of you believe in UFOs than you ever think you'll get a dollar out of Social Security. Now, I, I don't know what God is going to do. But, you know, this is a classic, you know, three-legged stool of uh, retirement that we have this Social Security guaranteed check. Now, guaranteed is an emphasis. I have a friend in California, a very successful businessman, uh, has a national business. He came to the full retirement age and he applied for it and he got a letter in the mail and said, you get zero, buddy. There was one irate businessman. Did you know that if you make too much, you get nothing after contributing all the years? So it's a shaky system. You can read the doomsayers on it or the ones with a more optimistic outlook. But if you, if you are in Social Security, by the way, as a pastor and talking to some pastors, some may have opted out of Social Security and you don't have that leg, then uh, you need to take a look at the stool and what will stabilize that. But most of us in here, if we contribute to Social Security, which we have to by law, unless there's some exemption, then we have that as that one piece. Social Security was never intended to fund our full retirement. You've heard of people living on Social Security, they're just not making it because it was never intended to uh, fund it all. The second one is pension and retirement. And there's going to be opportunity to ask uh, Karen and Lamar some questions later uh, regarding this and uh, how you're doing it and how you get into it. But this becomes a huge piece, but there are also uh, just tidal wave changes happening in our society. I put the term up there, pension and retirement, but really pension could almost be X'd out in our culture today. Uh, com uh, companies are no longer giving pensions. Now, there's a good reason for that because pensions made promises that they were not able to keep, are not able to keep as we speak. I have a man in, my, uh, in the community group over in Gentry, met yesterday morning. Uh, our host, his father, was a fireman in Detroit. Uh, he now lives down in North Carolina, but he just got a check or got a letter recently saying your pension benefits, city of Detroit, are being cut down to almost nothing. Uh, according to my friend, his dad sent a letter back and said, just keep that, put me on welfare, I'll make more. <laughs> okay, which may be close to true. But pensions have promised huge, maybe over 100% of what you earn during your working years and are now able, not able to perform it. The county we came from, in uh, Northern California, a major city there, a county seat, Stockton, California, went bankrupt just before we came here. Alameda, California, another Bay Area city. And that's happening because the promise of pension. So corporate and uh, municipalities are drawing back. I don't know if anybody is offering a pension anymore. A pension is a promise to offer you, as soon as you start drawing on that, a certain amount, probably per month, until you die normally, or you may spread it out over your spouse. Those guarantees are not out there, and what's, what's available today is either a 401k if you're in secular, or if you're in the church or nonprofit sector, it's the 403b, and that's for churches, schools, hospitals, 501c3s, etc. But it's a savings plan you voluntarily put in uh, some amount. Maybe the employer will match it. But the risk part is this, it rides with whatever in the investments are, where a pension would be a guaranteed check. Although I got a letter December 31 from my pension holder uh, saying, we've been doing well, and we think it's gonna you know, be there, but remember, there is no guarantee with any pension fund, okay? So again, a shaky leg on the stool, 
uh, Roth and uh, re regular IRAs are another way to voluntarily put aside apart from the 403B uh, that may be offered here or that you're eligible for or a 401K. You can do some separate saving, another $5,500 a year. So there's some ways out there to make this leg more stable even in the day when uh, there uh, are no pensions. And the last one is personal savings. If you read in the financial uh, material, you will see various numbers. Some are like eight times your working, your annual income when you stopped working. Well, that could be a huge number, especially if you don't start setting it aside until, uh, say, mid-50s when most people start worrying about their retirement. But there's some multiple out there. You can go on, uh, on sites like uh, Kiplinger.com and do a retirement calculator. And one of the pieces they will give you, what should you have in savings if you are going to continue your lifestyle at least at 75% of what you're used to living on now? Okay. So savings. Now go back to the boomers. What did I say they had in savings? $30,000. Now there's a 4% annual withdrawal rule. And the 4% is built on the fact that today with average annual uh, lifetime, lifespan, that many of us, thinking from 65 or 66 or 67, many of us are going to live 25 to 30 years. So you can't be drawing out 10% of your savings every year if it's going to last for 25 or 30 years. So they talk about the 4% rule, that if you draw out 4%, and that can be indexed up with inflation, following that, but 4%, your savings should mostly be there when you come to the end when God takes us home. I, I have a friend out on the West Coast uh, by the name of Hendricks. He's a development officer there, and he wrote an article sometime within the last year he worked for uh, Trinity Western College in Vancouver, and he said, uh, what we don't uh, anticipate is if we keep to the 4% rule, and it could be in IRAs and in other uh, sources, and we do that faithfully, we could come to the end of our lifetime and have most of that left to distribute out to bless our family and bless kingdom, et cetera, et cetera. But it's the discipline of not spending all that 30000 If you have a number up high enough, therefore you can draw 4% out, supplement the other two legs of the stool, and have uh, retirement with dignity, or as we'll see, financial freedom here uh, in a little while. So the three-legged stool financial planning, for those of you who are thinking retirement or already into it, review it, look at it, make contributions to it.